Hello, I am Katrick and today I'm making this video for the Construct2 Academy. Today we are set to see how to make a dialog box example in Construct2. A bit of a disclaimer first, uh, this is perhaps something more intermediate to advanced. Uh, if you are a complete beginner with Construct2, I strongly recommend you to go and check out other videos from the C2 Academy and perhaps uh, do a few of the beginners tutorials first just to get a hang of how Construct2 is working and to get used to the basic workflow. Uh, in this video it's not going to be a step-by-step -step recipe. Uh, I'm going to be talking mostly about a specific project, a specific implementation. It is just a way of doing dialog box in Construct. This is not necessarily the only or the best way to do so. Uh, it is a working example. Uh, I'll do my best to explain as clearly as I can what I've done, why I've done it and how I did it. Although I won't be taking you through every steps along the way. So first off, let's start with what we are going to do. As you can see, this is the finished example. You can see a sort of debug text area, a portrait of a character, the name of the character, and what the character is saying. There is currently a flashing cursor that is meant to indicate the player that it's expecting an interaction from the player to go to the next line. At the moment, you can see Hello Student. Today we are learning how to make uh, an RPG-like dialog box in Construct2. This is one single line. I click and it goes to the next character. It has displayed an animation. You can see that now to have a kind of cinematic discussion uh, I'm moving a character on the left, on the right, still have the name, the line of what he's saying, and once the animation is done, it's keeping up on a, on a single frame, and still expecting for another interaction. Another line of dialogue, and as you can see uh, there, uh, in the debug, this is currently the line 2 on 4. The third line, and now we have a question. The question is a line as well, as well as two possible answers that are expected to be clicked on. Depending on the picked answer, we will have a different line of dialogue and block of dialogue that will be displayed. So first, if I click yes, I'm going to the angry student. You can see that the portraits have some different moods, still a line being displayed and the discussion is going on. I've clicked before the text was finished to be displayed and this has as effect to directly display all the text and stop the timed display. Still an interaction and this is our last for the dialogue. You can see that I've made uh, it looping so we'll start again from the beginning. It's still the very same dialogue so I will just go directly to the question and this time I'm checking no and you can see that instead of the hangry student there is the surprised student oh we are already at it still a bit of dialogue going on and that's pretty much it for what we are settling to do so now let's see directly in construct how to do such an example. So now we are in Construct itself. Let's see a bit how the project is set up from the layout and visual editor perspective. So as we have seen in the demo example previously, there is a um, text area for debug purposes. 
So it's just a text box object. The type is set to text area. If it's getting filled and has a lot of lines, it will automatically display a scrolling bar on the right and on the bottom side uh, according to the length of the lines and the number of lines, which allows us to browse, if you will, a bit better our debug. In the absolute, the text area doesn't need to be displayed to a final player. This is something that we keep for ourselves as we are developing and that will help us make sure that our code is working as it should be and allows us to display some variable values see where we are in our execution basic debugging which is pretty pretty interesting for us. The project is using two layers as it stands and all the objects that are related to the dialog itself are placed in a single layer. I've named it dialog lay for layer and its parallax value is set to zero zero which means that in a regular game you would have the possibility to have a bigger layout and, uh, and use it in a uh, possibly scroll to a different place on the layout. With setting the parallax to zero zero we are making sure that no matter where our scrolling to or our character or whatever is on screen our dialog interface is still going to be displayed like that and appearing on screen in this way. In this layer we do have our different objects that we are going to need. You can see a sprite which is named portrait and is the portrait that we were displaying for our teacher and our student. In the absolute you can see that there are different animations and all of the animations are facing to the right. For a reminder in construct 2 the angle uh, zero always faces to the right and the uh, basic orientation, if you will, is always towards the right. So when an animation is set to not being mirrored, it is facing to the right and we will mirror the animation, it's going to face to the left. You can see the name is the name of the character, an underscore neutral question. And for a student, neutral, surprised, aggro, for aggressive. And those are the moods for the characters. I will get back to it later though. We do have the cursor, as I was saying, that does have a behavior flash. It's pretty simple. It's just an image being displayed and that is going to flash. There's nothing more to it. The text is being displayed in a sprite font object that I've named txt dialog. It has a few instance variables. It has txt to display, so we will see it later, but it's going to be the current line to be displayed that is going to be set in there. It has two Boolean instance variables. It has the show text and the finished. The idea there is that when show text is true, we are displaying letter by letter the text and finished is the actual old text is being displayed, the whole line, the old txt to display and so then we display the cursor image and we are expecting for the player to click on this object, the under dialog which is a kind of uh, subframe if you will, it can be whatever you want if you want, you can even have the user just clicking anywhere on screen. I do have another sprite font object, which is txt name. txt name, all purpose is strictly to display the name of the character. So I've placed it and that's all it does. I still have out of my layout currently the txt answer still a sprite font object. I've decided in this project to go with sprite fonts. You can obviously go with a text object if you will, but the sprite font has the advantage of being sprites and being allowed also to display perhaps nicer fonts without requiring a user to have the specific font 
being installed on the computer or having to download the font when using the web fonts. So with Sprite fonts, I know that the text I want to display, the way it's going to be, is there, it's packaged in the game directly. It's just a matter of preferences, as I say, you can use the text object. You could even use the text box object, it would work. TXT answer object as an instance variable ID answer. This is going to be used because we are going to create dynamically a couple of instances in regards to the number of possible answers to the question we are displaying on screen. So the question is still going to be in the txt dialog object and we will create as many txt answer instances as we need and uh, each one to to be allowed to to know what answer we are referring to later we are going to fill the value of that instance variable and in the same way we have a cursor answer object which is pretty much like the cursor next object and is just a flashing picture that is going to be there to let the player know that we want her to interact with the answer and pick one of the possible answers we do also have the button object and it's just for this example you can see and remember that at the end of the dialog we are displaying a big button that allows us to reload the layout and start again from the beginning and this is actually this very button by default it is set to be invisible and is going only to be shown at the very end of our dialog you can also notice that it is on the background layer because at the end of our dialog we are just making the whole dialog layer invisible. In our project we also do have a few other objects and plugins that are not visible in the layout directly. You can see an Ajax plugin this is actually just going to be used to load our dialogs XML file on start of the layout. We do have the function plugin which we are going to use a lot. You are going to see as soon as we are going into the event sheet. For the inputs I've decided to go with the mouse uh, in this example but you could very well implement the keyboard or the touch input. It pretty much depends on the project you are making and the inputs uh, you are allowing your user to, to have. Finally, the XML object in itself, which is going to read, display and allow us to pick specific lines of our dialogs.xml file. You can notice the file is being into the files folder, so it means that it is a project file. There is a tutorial in the website of uh, Skyra that you can go to which explains a bit in depth what project files are. To find the tutorial I'm talking about, go to the tutorials part of the website and use the search the keyword project files and the first result is going to be using project files in Construct2. Be sure to read the tutorial to understand a bit much about uh, how to use project files in your project and what it can bring to, to it. Now let's have a look at our XML file. You can right click on the file and open it. The XML file is a text file that you can open in pretty much any notepad-like software. I'm using Notepad++, which is an open source notepad, which has syntax highlighting. Uh, in our case, uh, the XML is automatically handled, and you can see that we can collapse and expand the structure of the file according to the different tags. What is XML? A good thing to do is to directly go and see into the manual of Construct2 in the plugin references 
the XML objects. There are three examples and uh, links that will take you and show you what uh, uh, XML path is and give you more information on exactly what it is. Uh, it's pretty much a text file that as human we are able to read a bit easier than other data files that computers can have. It's structured in a way. It has, uh, as you can see currently, the my game overall tag which contains dialogue tags the ID and type there are attributes of the tag and the tag itself can contain other tags in our case a line and still more comments the line still has its own attributes as well and if you remember when I talked a bit earlier about the sprite object you can see there a portrait teacher and teacher is the name of our character and a part of the animation names we are using. Mood is another part of that name. Pause is the position. And you can see actually, hello student, today we are learning how to make a RPG like dialog box in Construct 2, which is the line content that was displayed itself. And the closing tag. Same here, dialogue, closing tag for this dialogue, other dialogue blocks of the same way. I've set different types of dialogues, normal, which just contains lines and display those lines. Each dialogue block also contains next dialogue tag which has a number and this number is actually the next ID for the tag I will want to display afterwards. In my dialogue ID 2 you can see that the type is a question and the tag used in there are not lines but question, answer, another next dialogue but with an attribute ID there answer, next dialogue, and we close the dialogue. We still have two regular, normal dialogues, and you can say that they are actually the different branches according to the answer that is being picked, either yes or no. If the yes answer is being picked, the next dialogue is going to be three, and so it will display this block of dialogue, of course I've noticed, the angry student, and if the answer is no, ID2, next dialogue ID2 is going to be 4, dialogue 4, no, we already started to learn, surprised students. And finally, uh, end dialogue, which is actually empty, and we will use it according to our implementation. Read further on the comments of this file and uh, you will see that it makes more sense once we dive into the way I've implemented the code in the event sheets. This structure I decided on. You can just copy it if you want, it will work with the events from the project, but you can also modify it and just make it your own, Make you, you can make XML file the way you want. The idea is that you are using a specific syntax, that you are opening tags and closing them, like in HTML language, and that any contained tag is still complete, like it's an open tag, a closed tag, within an open tag, a closed tag, etc etc. It's nested and it's uh, uh, an important part of the structure. This is the end of the part one that showed how to set up the projects. In the next part we are diving directly into the event sheet and the implementation itself. I hope you have enjoyed this video. 
don't hesitate to check out some of the other Constructo Academy material. Thank you for watching. Thank you.